you. This is a fear less five. Hello and welcome to another episode of Fear Less You, the podcast where we discuss, dissect, and examine some of life's greatest fears. I want to thank you for spending some time with me today. In fact, I wanted to thank everyone who has listened to the podcast thus far. Your support means the world to me and contributes to the growth of this show. I set out to touch the world with every episode and with your help, I'll be able to do just that. And I'm thrilled to announce that the show is now available on iTunes, in addition to SoundCloud and Spreaker. If you're listening on SoundCloud or Spreaker, be sure to follow me there. And if you're listening to this episode on YouTube, do the same. Subscribe to my channel to be notified the moment a new episode drops. And if you're listening to this week's episode on iTunes, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated when a new episode drops each and every Thursday, 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Friday morning Eastern. Also, be sure to rate the show and leave us a review. By doing so, you're helping our placement and ranking in search results. Help me touch the lives of millions of people around the world, helping them to understand more and in return, fear less. All right, you guys, today's Fear Less 5 is dedicated to those daredevils, those hustle and heart athletes I work with on a weekly basis, and to the thousands of others who follow me on Instagram. This episode is dedicated to the tumblers. This is three ways to get over a mental block. You know, one of the most prominent issues I'm asked to consult on from athletes, coaches, and parents is the mental block. What is a mental block, you ask? By definition, a mental block is an inability to recall some specific thing or perform a mental action. You may know them by their more common names, creative or writer's block. But in the cheerleading world, a mental block is probably the most overused term to describe when an athlete has lost her skill or more specifically her will to perform that skill. When I have an athlete, coach, or parent approach me concerning a mental block, the very first thing I do is say, let's stop calling it a mental block because a true mental block would prevent you from entering the gym or even stepping onto the mat. It's giving your mental defeat too much power over you. So let's instead focus on the positive and understand the why of what's ailing you. And perhaps in doing so, you'll be able to overcome what's been holding you back. Using core concepts and strategies I've devised over the years, I help athletes understand their fears and mental blocks from a more unconventional point of view. Number one, master the basics. Too often I see programs, coaches, parents, and athletes rushing past basic core principles in tumbling. This includes core control, proprioception, coordination, body shapes, and more, just to hurry them along to advance skills they want for competition or tryouts. As a result, I see a ton of poorly executed, dangerous skills being thrown by athletes who have no business throwing them. And parents and coaches who have no idea the lasting damage these athletes are doing to their bodies and minds. Guaranteed, the number one cause of mental blocks is step skipping in progression. Without a solid foundation to build upon and fall back on, athletes are ill-equipped to throw advanced skills. Their minds have not been nurtured with an understanding of solid foundational concepts. And in turn, the brain freaks out once it's caught up to what the body is trying to pull off. The stronger your command over the basics, the more capable you'll be of compensating and course correcting when things go wrong. Number two, define your fear and know your why. A lot of times, the big problem with fear is that we use the word as an umbrella term. We don't take the time to get specific with our fears because we either feel ashamed to be afraid in the first place or we feel that it's too silly to even say out loud. But here's a secret when it comes to fear. When you're specific AF, you increase the odds of understanding exactly what you're afraid of and why. And when you're that specific, you can begin to break down with pinpoint accuracy a strategy for going about working to outperform your fear. The more you understand your fear, the less you'll fear your fear. One exercise you could do is to start a fear journal. Sometimes, writing your fears down or saying them out loud allows you to see just how irrational and silly they actually are. Number three, watch your language. 
Rhetoric plays a huge role in eliciting specific actions from ourselves and those we teach. For instance, if I were to tell you to hold out your hand as if you were holding a pen and then tell you to show me what cursive looked like, what would you do? Now, if I tell you to hold that same gesture, but now show me what scribbling looks like, what would you do? Now, stop. Think a moment. At any time, did I tell you to mime writing? No, I didn't. But you just showed me two forms of writing without me giving you the direction to write. You see, words are powerful because they hold meaning by association. The brain takes in so much data throughout our days that in order to process solutions faster, it's programmed to learn and take shortcuts where it can. So one of the ways the brain takes shortcuts is in the words we use to associate meanings to things and vice versa. The more specific the word is to the action, the more accurate the action. Over the years, I've helped counsel hundreds of athletes through their mental blocks, utilizing these three key steps. I guarantee that if you take your time, if you're not afraid to go back to basics, ask for help or a spot, and get super specific with yourself as to why you're even afraid in the first place, you're going to experience a drastic, lasting change when it comes to mental blocks. If you learn these steps and come up with a process by which you know exactly how to cycle through your blocks, you won't be crippled or stifled as long or as detrimentally. Recovery is in our understanding. You guys, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Remember to subscribe wherever you're listening to this, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spreaker, or YouTube, and be sure to share today's episode online. Send this to a friend, an athlete, a parent, or a coach that you feel needs to hear it. If you have any questions about this episode, be sure to hit me up at info at coachlane.com or send a DM to at Coach Lane on Instagram. Remember, if we seek to understand more, we can learn to fear less. I'm Coach Lane. I'll catch you on the flip. This has been a Fear Less 5. Seven. It's turning into more like seven.